So today uh, I want to discuss uh, I love you. Avoiding marriage mistakes. I love you. Avoiding marriage mistakes. Something sisters often find themselves in the midst of. In the scriptures, marriages were arranged by their parents. Right? What, for example, uh, I had a child, he had a child. We say, hey, let's arrange that in time they get married. And of course, that's providing that the child or children live up to their parents' expectations. Okay? We don't have that today in America or throughout the world, as a matter of fact, where our people at in the diaspora, we don't have that. I think Saudi Arabia has that, if I'm not mistaken. Certain nations have that. Some Indian, Pakistan, some of them have that. Uh, but that's phasing out. The white man's slowly phasing that out. So it's difficult to try to pair children up. It can be done, but it is more difficult. So those of us that are coming to the truth, y'all are all adults, and you got your own mindset. And you think you can choose the perfect spouse. But especially the women. They think they can pick. Okay. All right. Uh, as a result of this, we allow courting, not dating. We allow people to court and not date. And you may ask, well, what? Now, neither one of them is biblical. Now, I'm going to say it again. Neither one of them is biblical. But you may ask, so you may ask, what is the difference between courting and dating? Well, courting is you getting to know the woman, the woman getting to know you, and if you go out, you will be chaperoned so that there's no incidentals. Dating is sex without marriage. I'm going to say it again. Dating is sex without marriage. And we've all, back in the day, we've all dated. Brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about. And some of you sisters, you know what we're talking about. We'll take them to the movies. We're not interested in the movie, sister. Let's hide around why we got to sit in the back. Let's just sit in the back. Go in the back. Back row. But I can't see the movie. To hell with the movie! <laughs> Then we meet our boys and we go, hey, smell my fingers. <laughs> that's what we did. <laughs> this is back in the day. I don't know what y'all do today, but that's what we did. We just y'all. That's what we did. So dating involves the male and female having sexual relations without marriage. Give me Exodus twenty two sixteen. Let's go there. Exodus twenty two sixteen. And like I said, if you got little kids. The video I'll show, I, I don't advise it for children. So get your kids out of the room. The book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, have sex with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Now, that was God's law. Now, that was a sub-law. I'm going to say it again. Or I'll say it like this. That was a statute. To marriage. Because marriage was, as we discussed earlier, was arranged by the parents. If you went around that law that the parents arranged and you went some sideway, whispering in the girl's ear, trying to get with her, and you have sex with her, the law was you must marry her. That's why in the Deep South they had something called shotgun wedding. A shotgun wedding was when the father found out that you was banging his daughter, he made sure. You married her. He dragged your black behind to the justice of the peace with his shotgun in hand and made sure you stood there and performed your marriage vows. That's called a shotgun wedding. Give me Deuteronomy 22, 28. That's why when I was young, when, we, when girls would disappear and go down south for long periods of time, we have realized and found out later that they got pregnant. We said, oh, that's why they went down south. Down south was the safety hub to hide your indiscretions. Because the parents in, up north did not want to be embarrassed by their whole daughter being pregnant without marriage. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin. Now, this is the same thing that we just read in Exodus twenty-two sixteen. Go ahead. Which is not betrothed. She's not engaged. And lay hold on her. And lay hold on her. And lie with her. And have sex with her. And they be found. And, and they be found. Meaning it's been discovered 
that they were having consensual sex. That's what it means, and they be found. Notice, because she wasn't screaming, ah, get off. Uh-uh. It says, and they be found. Go ahead. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. There was a judgment for doing that. You had to give the damsel's father 50 shekels. That's about $450 today, U.S. Go ahead. And she shall be his wife. Watch this. Because he hath humbled her, uh -huh. he may not put her away all his days. That was the next judgment. Not only did you have to pay 50 shekels, which is about $450, you could not put her away all your days. There's nothing she could do. Now, you better pray she wasn't a demon. There's nothing she could do for you to put her away. Nothing. So, why don't the BHI, the black Hebrew Israelites, who practice allegedly, uh, all these sexual indiscretions out there. Why don't they apply that law? You got to give the damsel's father $450, and you may not put away all your days. Okay? Why don't they, why don't they practice that? They don't believe in the Bible. A lot of them, I'd say, I'd say about 8 out of 10 of them are not, are not sincere. I won't say all of them. But I'll say about 8 out of 10 of them are not sincere. All that polygamy stuff is garbage. Because they pass women around like skittles. Have sex with her today, she piss him off, he cuts her loose, she go to the next man. Then he, she piss him off, she go to the next, oh, what the hell is this? Like damn romper room. Right, that's why they don't want to get the paperwork. Right. You understand? That's why they don't want to get that. So let's discuss the importance of proving a friend. I want to discuss the importance of proving a friend. Give me Ciroc 6. Proving a friend and trying spirits is the same thing. I'm going to say it again. Proving a friend and trying spirits is the same thing. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. You brothers, you want a friend, you better prove him. Sisters, you want a friend, you better prove her. Now that's, they call that plutonic relationships. Plutonic meaning friends. But the same principles that apply for a plutonic relationship also apply for a romantic relationship involving marriage. Prove him. Prove her. Prove them. It's the same principle. Look at 1 John 4 and 1. The book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Go ahead. But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Notice the next part, but try the spirits. Try them. That means prove them. Prove what they say. Verse 2. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. If you have flesh, you have color. I'm going to say it again. If you have flesh, you have color. So when people say, oh, I believe he came in the flesh, ask him what he looked like. Then you'll, then you'll hear them lie and say, he didn't have no color. They're not confessing that he came in the flesh when they say that. Okay, read. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. That person that says he has no color, that he's all colors, that he's invisible, is not of God. Go ahead. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. That's the spirit of Antichrist. Go ahead. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. So John was explaining to us that spirit of Antichrist is already in the world at his time. He said, try those spirits that say they're of God. So just like you got to try spirits to prove whether or not they are false prophets, the same thing goes in a plutonic or romantic relationship. I'm going to say it again. You got to do the, it's the same principles for a platonic or, or romantic relationship as it is with a pro, so-called prophet. You got to try them. You must prove them. Go back to Sirach. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. And you know why you got to prove and try them? Who knows why you got to prove these spirits? Try these spirits. Saying the same thing. Why do you got to prove a friend? Why you got to try spirits? Who can give me the answer? One brother, go ahead, stand up. Give me your name. Because not everybody 
they're going to appear righteous, but they're not. They're pretenders. Okay, I'll go with that one a little better. Now, in case y'all didn't know, people lie. People lie. Just, sisters, you ever met a man that lied to you? He promised you the world? And he's a daggone liar. You brothers, too. You know what I'm talking <laughs> She will put. She will send her manager to talk to you. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But people lie. So you got to try them, okay? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.